couple. Brother Josh, we'll have you up first, and then we'll have opportunity for a couple more. Yeah, I'd like to thank the Lord for um, having his peace in my life. Uh, I definitely felt it over the past few weeks, um, particularly with my, my work situation. Uh, I got sent over to another division within electrical called the data division, I guess is kind of outside of electrical, uh, but I, I can't really explain what we do, but uh, it's been a different learning experience for sure. Uh, I, I don't think it was a place that I really wanted to be, um, but I looked at the positive side of things and the Lord showed me that too with being able to, to witness to, to new souls and, and giving me an opportunity where I won't see these people for too long, but to be able to, to speak the gospel, and um, which I did that to one of the coworkers I primarily worked with for uh, just over a month. I, I was working with this fellow um, and I was able to witness the word to him and uh, things got very surprisingly busy for us. Uh, where we had to work some extra overtime shifts um, and it was a lot of work to do <laughs> and so naturally because of that this this man that i was working with got stretched stressed out and a lot of that stress came down on me uh, as an apprentice uh, i have to listen to what i am told to do and so uh, i'm was doing that but after a while i was getting pressingly more hard just because uh, i feel like there was a level of respect that wasn't there or maintained, and it made me really mad. I remember going home almost every day for the last week being mad, um, and I knew that it was the Lord that was giving me that peace while I was working to, to not lash out or to get angry. Um, I told this man the, the word and what I believe, and um, we, we are different. We are set aside from what the world might might ask um, or might react to certain situations and I could really feel that it wasn't me keeping myself calm but it was the Lord and on our final day which was Friday this this man had to go in for a minor surgery so I wouldn't be working with him anymore it was a very rough day and I remember just having to, to walk away when he was explaining something to me because I was so angry and I went into the bathroom and I just quickly committed it under my breath saying like, Lord, you have to help me get through the rest of this day. Um, I told him I couldn't work overtime. We ended up working overtime. And so it was just very frustrating for me. And um, at the end of the day, we were packing up everything. And I know inside my flesh wanted to lash out at this man, uh, especially because the way he was talking to me at the end of the day saying that I need a lot to learn. and and kind of discouraging me in, in a way. And I just instantly, um, a memory came to mind a few weeks ago, there was a blessing shared at Youngies just, and, and the sister that gave this blessing just said, whatever leaves your mouth, you can't get back. So to be wise with what you say, and that really gave me the peace. And you know, your mind thinks at a million miles a minute, and so I just thought of this man's future. And if there was, was to be salvation, I lashed out at him how that, that wouldn't be good. And I felt this overwhelming peace and I stayed and I helped him clean up his van and load his van. And I know that wasn't of me because I know that my flesh was so angry at that point. And I went home happy that I left this situation on a good note and, and wishing him the best in his surgery and his well-doing. And I just really like to thank the Lord that you can really tell when his hand is in your life and really calming me. And yeah, I just like to thank the Lord for that. Thanks, Brother Josh, good to hear those things. Yes, uh, Vancouver Revival Fellowship has infiltrated Hula Electric. We've got Josh in the field, myself, Nick, and Alex in the, in the office. So it's, uh, there's been lots of people that have been hearing the word, which is good. That's, uh, that's what we're there to do. And, um, you know, as a brother was speaking, there's, you know, time and the word says that time and chance happeneth to us all. And, uh, but we know and, and, and trust that there's circumstances that, that we find ourselves in because the Lord is constantly looking to teach us and, uh, and we're being taught so that we can grow. And, you know, it's, it's up to us to be able to recognize those, those, you know, they're, 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 Rather than looking them at them as challenges, we see them as opportunity, and uh, that's an opportunity for the Lord 
uh, to teach us and to cause us to grow, um, that we might be used. And that's, that's what we're here to do. We're here to be used by the Lord for the work that we've been called to. So it's good to hear that opportunity for a couple more. Sister Avril, and then I saw Sister Skinner. We'll have those in that order. Thank you. Maybe we'll have brothers in, in, in the uh, salvation meeting. Um, yeah, I just wanted to give a quick testimony about the camp that I was just at Fresno. I don't necessarily want to reiterate, reiterate everything that um, Sister Clark and Leah already said, but I'm really thankful to the Clarks because I kind of just asked to go last minute and they took me all the way to California for that camp. Um, but yeah, those those people are just a phenomenal group of people. They're very kind and giving and loving. Um, and I got to see my friend Esther, who I met in Thanksgiving, and it was really nice to see her again. Um, but it's funny, I feel like we all had the same like blessing and rather just testimony. But I remember writing it down as soon as he said it, but he said, um, yeah, God doesn't promise us a smooth journey. He promises us a, a solid sh ship. And um, yeah, that's just been, ever since he said it, it's kind of been just like a really big blessing to me because it's so true and evident um, in all of our lives. We all have like trials and things, but God promises us a solid ship and, you know, that support and comfort from the Lord. And I just had a blessing in that. And yeah, I was really happy to be at that camp and I'm really happy to be here. And I just praise the Lord for that. Uh, yes, I can praise the Lord, first of all, for saving me and um, for the day of prayer and fast last week. Um, I, uh, the Lord did a miracle for me uh, during that day. Um, in an instant, he changed the condition of my heart. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just back up a little bit. Um, going into the fast, I was, I had read some scriptures and what, what stuck out, stuck out to me in my heart was um, love, kindness, and forgiveness. And I thought, I don't feel those right now. I don't feel that in my heart. And so then I knew, uh, you know, I knew that I was had some challenges in some areas, and that's what I was praying about. I know we were to be praying for witnessing, but, you know, Sometimes you got to look after your own health before, before anything else. And uh, so I, you know, I was praying about these things, and there was some, there was some scriptures I saw, you know, about uh, the woman taken in adultery who commit a sin, and uh, you know, Jesus said, you know, he that is without sin, you first cast the stone. And so I was thinking a bit more about forgiveness, and I was praying um, to help me in that area and you know sometimes a person may not know that they need to ask for forgiveness and so that is kind of tricky um, to be able to forgive someone when they don't think that they've done anything wrong yet a situation can be affecting the heart anyway um, I just saw um, an expression on a on this person and in an instant I felt this compassion and it just goes to you know without saying that the forgiveness was there in an instant and with that there was love and with that there was kindness and you know I'm just very grateful to, to the Lord that, you know, he first forgave me and, you know, he, he rose victorious. I believe that that's because he forgave and he took my sin and transgression upon him. And I don't have any right to have those feelings, mind you. Uh, I live in this natural life and I have feelings and sometimes my feelings can get hurt. My feelings can get hurt easily because I'm, I'm that type of a person, but 
the Lord is, is bigger than those feelings. You know, the Lord is, the scripture says, um, the Lord is greater than my heart. And, you know, I really praise the Lord for those scriptures, for um, his working in my life. And yeah, for the spirit that without that spirit, those things wouldn't, wouldn't be, you know, that love, that kindness, that forgiveness. And it's truly amazing um, how the Lord can, can hang on to me. And he knows me, he knows me better than myself. And he's um, capable of, of helping me through those more difficult uh, situations and just to um, help me make it into the end. You know, I also read a scripture uh, that, um, Oh man, I just forget, forgot it. But it talks about, um, oh, it's the 23rd Psalm. The last verse says um, uh, that I can dwell in the house of the Lord forever and um, abide. You know, that word also means abide, li- stay with the Lord forever. And that's just where I want to be. That's where there is peace and safety and love and comfort and joy and all those things that the Lord would want for me. And I praise the Lord for that. Thanks, Sister Sandra. Good to hear that. And uh, both the blessings. I was thinking about, um, because I was there present, to to hear what our brother Jeff had to say. And the conclusion of of what he had said about, you know, the Lord hadn't didn't promise us smooth sailing or smooth waters, uh, but a solid ship. Uh, you know, at the end, the conclusion, he said, the the moral of the story is to stay in the ship. And, uh, you know, just as our sister said, uh, to abide, to abide in the things of the Lord. That is where our safety is. Uh, the troubles and the trials of life are there. They're present and they always will be. But we stay in the ship where our safety is. And the, and the closer we are to the presence of the Lord is the safest place that we can be. And, um, you know, it's at that point uh, you know, the word says that the strong are to bear the infirmities of the weak. And there's moments uh, where uh, we or our brother and sister might be in a moment of weakness. And uh, those that are strong are in a position to help and to support. And and that is by being in the presence of the things of the Lord and in the midst and abiding and uh, staying within the ship that we can then cast out that lifeline to help each other and to, to, to support uh, our brother and our sister, and of course, you know, the greater calling to 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 seek uh, for the lost souls that they might be saved and be brought into the same uh, presence uh, that we experience. So praise the Lord for the, the blessings in those testimonies. I will leave them there and hand over to Brother O'Rourke for the word. Far, even just the, the testimonies and um, the comments of Brother Clark was just mentioning lead us completely into the word today. And... Um, I'm greatly rejoicing for that because the spirit has to be evident in these meetings. The spirit has to be, it can't be of ourselves. And and I praise the Lord that it's not. Everything we do, everything that comes forth in these meetings is of the spirit. It's, 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 you know, it's just, it's allowing the Lord to anoint us and lead us and guide us and, and show us what we need to see. But it all comes from the Lord. It's not the conceptions of man. It's not the thoughts of men that, uh, you know, we, we try and, we try and, uh, spring forth to each other we, we encourage each other we lift each other up we're you know as, as it was said you know we, we we look to be together and and, and move forward together and um, praise the lord um but what i want to look at today is and as i just mentioned about you know the leading of um the spirit there was the thought that i when i started these when i started these thoughts was um well the first thought i had was is our anchor holding um, and then it, it moved towards the question, where is our anchor? Where is our anchor holding? And that's essentially what I want to look at today. And I want to look at the power of, of where we're holding our anchor. Um, you know, you know, the, the, you, we can easily look at, you know, different variations of that, but the question really becomes, is our anchor in this world or is it with the Lord? And it's an interesting concept because we live in the world and we, we, we have to abide by the things of this world. We have to walk in the ways of this world. We, 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 have, to, we have the things come against us in this world, whether they, whether they be good or bad. 
there'll be situations that we go through where, you know, as it was said in the comments and, and, and the thoughts there, that as long as we remain within the ship, as long as our anchor is holding, that's where our benefit will be. But we have to consider where, where is our anchor holding? Where, where, is, it, where is it that we've, we've, we've set our anchor towards? And, uh, you know, the, the, the purpose of the anchor, you know, when we consider, you know, just the, the standard definition of it really is used to keep boats from drifting away. Um, so the, the sailors would, they would anchor, um, they would, they would anchor their boats. And so, you know, if there were storms or there was wind or current or, and it doesn't even have to be that much. It doesn't have to be a storm. It could be, you know, the slightest movement. I'm sure we, you know, most of us probably at one point in our life have been out in a boat where, you know, even just the slightest drifting can cause you to go out, you know, uh, you know, whatever, whatever length out into the lake or into the ocean. And it, it can happen without even noticing. It can happen with, um, without you even realizing that it's, it's even going on. And it's just a slow drifting, you know, and of course, it'd be those, those other times where, you know, the impact is a lot greater, where it's a really heavy storm, or, or the, there's something that's really coming against you, and, and you can really feel it, and, you, and you're, and you find yourself in that position where you, you're grasping on to the foundation, you're grasping on, where's my anchor? And, and you, you're really considering, like, you know, I, I need to make sure that, you know, like, you, you'll hold on to something, or, um, you know, like, whatever it is, like, you, you, whatever it is you're putting your, your anchor towards, right? You know, you can think of all sorts of natural aspects of that. You know, we're using the, the aspect of a boat. So maybe you would tie, tie your boat to a tree or to a large rock or, in, you know, for larger boats, they would have an anchor that would go out down into the sea and it would be grounded into the, the seabed floor. And that would be the security of where, where your anchor is holding. And, and it really does become this security and where our anchor is held is where we place our security. So do we place our security in the world? Do we place our security in the Lord? You know, sometimes we have to ask ourselves that question. When we find ourselves in a, a you know, in a, in a position where things are coming against us, and maybe they're subtle things, maybe they're not something that, you know, we're even realizing is happening, that we're even realizing is, is 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 happening in our lives and this, this can happen a lot we can have subtle situations that come upon us and those could be even more dangerous those situations could be more dangerous because we don't notice it we don't see it we don't necessarily pay attention to it but what i want to look at today is where and, and the blessed the best place for our anchor to be held and um but we'll read here in acts 27 and you'll see why obviously that uh I considered what our brother mentioned in the, in the opening comments, Acts 27 and verse 28. We'll just look here to introduce the thoughts a bit further. Uh, in this situation here, this is the uh, account of the tempestuous voyage of Paul towards Rome. And uh, Paul had been given um, a great security from the Lord, a promise from the Lord that, you know, there was an intent for him to get to Rome. There was, there was a purpose that he had, the Lord had for him to get to Rome. So in this case, you know, we're, we're going to read uh, of the account of what happened on this journey of, of, of him and the sailors towards Rome. Um, I'm sure it's probably, a, 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 you know, an account we've looked at before, but we'll just take it up in verse 28. And sounded and found it 20 fathoms. And when they had gone a little further, they sounded again and found it 15 fathoms. Then fearing lest we, sh we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. And the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship when they had let down the boat into the sea, under color as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship. Paul said to the centurion to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. So the aspect I want to look at there is, you know, really, as I said, that there was that intro that you know, came up in the testimonies and opening comments, but that, that's, there was a responsibility of the soldiers and the and the and the sailors, I should say, that um, they had to abide in the ship. They they had to continue um, guiding the ship naturally. You know, if, if all the shipmen were to jump out and and just leave the boat to to whatever whatever it was going to be, whether it was anchored or not, who knows what ability it would have had to get where it was going. So there was a promise given to the to um, to Paul that he would he would 
be able to come through this journey. But there was also this responsibility that the sailors and the soldiers had. They had to stay in the ship in order for that to happen. So although the Lord had made a promise unto Paul, there was a responsibility unto the soldiers and the sailors that they and themselves had to stay in the ship. So in other words, it couldn't have just been Paul that stayed in the ship and, and, and tried to figure out how the, how the ship was going to get where it was going. There, you know, and when we look at that from the aspect of ourselves, as the church, as Christians, as, as ones who follow the Lord, you know, we have been given the same promise that as we go through, whatever we go through, the Lord will be there, but we have to remain in the ship. We have to remember what responsibility we have as soldiers and Christians for Christ, that we need to remain in what we were called to do. If we were to jump out of the ship and, and, and just leave things to whatever they're going to be, well then, how does the Lord work with that? But there's an importance that we need to remember, you know, this is what the, what the Lord has, has placed within us. There's this divine inter intervention that the Lord ha has, has brought forth upon us. You know, we have this responsibility to fulfill. So we'll look at the next scripture here in verse um, 31. Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, they cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat and let her fall off. And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them to take meat, saying, this, this day is the 14th day he's going on and he's encouraging them to eat. So he's, he was encouraging them to stay in the ship. That's the, the main part that we, we look at here. And, but you know, they, they cut off those anchors. They'd anchored themselves into the world. They, they, they anchored themselves to thinking, we're going to anchor into the ocean here and hope that, you know, nothing comes against us. But that's not where we anchor ourselves. We anchor ourselves unto the Lord because it's the Lord who goes before us. It's the Lord that, that brings about um, the benefit in our lives. We'll go to Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6 in uh, verse 17. Verse 17, wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation when the hope set before us. Sorry, missed a the part there. We might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that which in the veil. Whither, or that word whither means to the place, or you, so you could read here, to the place the forerunner, and the forerunner is Christ. This is a reference to Jesus Christ going before us. The forerunner is, is for us entered, even Jesus made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now, the reason I wanted to, to look at that is we need to understand where our anchor needs to be. Why is our anchor in the Lord? And the reason our anchor is in the Lord and not in this world is because the Lord has gone before us to provide for us what is required. He's, he's gone before us to guide that ship to where he will be, to where he is. Now, if we are anchored unto the Lord, that is the safest place we can be. If we are in the ship that the Lord himself is guiding, that is the safest place to be. If we go forth in this understanding that Jesus is before us and not looking behind us, not looking to the side, not looking to the, to the left or the right, and just looking to who goes before us. Who goes before us? Jesus. Who is the forerunner of this ship? Jesus. You know, we, we, can, we can look at, you know, what, what, what is this place? What, what, the ship remaining, you know, we liken that as the place of safety. And we're looking at the, you know, we, we uh, I guess we use that analogy to represent the church, to represent the assembly, the fellowship. You know, if we are anchored unto the Lord and we are on the ship, and we are allowing the Lord to guide us and lead us and go before us, then we are 
we are in that refuge. We are in that place of refuge. And that's what the, what the assembly is. It's a place of refuge that those, you know, whatever we were or weren't before in our lives or, or, or whatever, whatever's to happen, even in the lives that we, we live now, there is this place of refuge. We have the grace of the Lord upon us. We have the mercy of the Lord upon us. We have the blessing of the Lord upon us. And that place will, will, will continue to exist as long as our hearts are anchored unto the Lord. Um, there's a few things we can look at in these scriptures. You know, it, it speaks there about, you know, it describes this, uh, we're, in, we're in God willing more abundantly to show, sorry, where is it? Um, verse 18. No, 19, which hope we have is an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. So there again, there's this place of refuge. There's this place where, you know, we were, we were able to, to find peace. And um, I wanted to look at, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of come back to, we'll come back to these scriptures, but I wanted to look at the, uh, the, the cities of refuge. If we go to Numbers 35, I don't mean to deter too much from here, but there is a, a relation I saw here that I, I found a great blessing in. Numbers 35. I'm just going to take it up in verse 24. These were the, the, the description here was this, the cities of refuge that were set up um, for the children of Israel, both on the side of Jordan and the side of Canaan. And I think there was 48 cities altogether. So um, each, I think it was each tribe would, um, from their inheritance, they would give up six cities that would be for refuge. And the, the, the Levite priests would live within these cities. And essentially the purpose of these cities of refuge were to be um, places of refuge that people could go. Basically, if they'd done something, particularly for um, someone who was a manslaughter, so um, someone that accidentally killed somebody. So they didn't, they didn't have the intention to do so, um, you know, but unfortunately not everybody sees that whether you have the intention or not, um, it didn't make people very happy. So there would be this there would be this judgment against you know the situation whether you be claimed as a murderer or whether you be claimed as a manslaughter and, or a manslayer, and um, so if the judgment was upon you that you basically you were a manslayer but you did it without um, intent, um, the judgment would be that you'd be allowed to go into the city, in the city of refuge, and the allowance of who was entered into those cities of refuge you couldn't just. In other words, you couldn't murder someone and then, oh, I'm going to run to the city of refuge, you can't touch me. No, you, you had to be allowed to enter in. You had to be given allowance by the priests, the Levite priests, uh, particularly the high priest that um, would be amongst that city. And so essentially, if you were a manslayer and you, um, it was deemed that you, you basically didn't do it on purpose, um, you would be placed within the city. And... Um, so we just read in verse 24, just to explain, then the congregation shall judge between the slayer and the revenger of blood according to these judgments. So when we look at there, we have the slayer, so the person who committed the act, and then we have the revenger. So that would have been someone, for instance, um, the next of kin or the brother, you know, you killed my brother, I'm coming after you. Um, they wouldn't have been very happy. And I don't think, you know, they didn't necessarily care whether the person did it on purpose or not. So there would be, in verse 25, and the congregation shall deliver the slayer out of the hand of the revenger of blood, and the congregation shall restore him to the city of his refuge, whither he was fled, and he shall abide in it until the death of the high priest, which was anointed with holy oil. Now consider that for a moment. You, you've done something, you needed refuge, you go to the Lord, you, you know, in this case you go to the, the high priest, and they, they, they claim that you can, you can go into the city and you can remain there and you, you have to remain there until the death of the high priest, okay? Now, the only way that they could continue on in safety was to remain in that city. If they were to go on the outskirts of the border, if they were to uh, 
to, for whatever reason, walk out of that, that border, to find themselves on the, on, on the outside of that border, on the outside of that city, and the revenger were to come along and find them, that's it. There's, there's nothing stopping them from that point. But they were not allowed to come in to, to that city. They weren't allowed to come into the place of refuge. So in other words, the revenger couldn't do anything, you know, against that person because they were within the city. So the purpose being you needed to remain within the city in order to, to continue to claim that refuge. And if you were out of that city, then you take your matters into your own hands because if you get caught, that's up to you. Um, verse 27, and the revenger of blood find him without the borders of the city of his refuge and the revenger of blood killed us there, he shall not be guilty of blood because he should have remained in the city of his refuge until the death of the high priest. But after the death of the high priest, the slayer shall return unto the land of his possession. So these things shall be for a statute of judgment unto you throughout your generations in all your dwellings. And when we look at that, that scripture before in Hebrews, it talks about whither to the place the forerunner is entered, even Jesus, made a high priest for us. So we've entered in to this refuge, the city of refuge, this place of safety under the high priest, Lord Jesus Christ. But he also died for us. He also died. So, so now, no longer, what was against us is no longer upon us because he died. He went before us and, and made this city of refuge. He made this place, a sanctuary that we could come into. And really, we refer to this as heaven now. So if we are in that place of heaven, if we are anchored into the place of heaven, if, we are, if our hearts are directed towards the Lord where he's gone to, to, to provide that place of safety for us, but not only, you know, it's not a matter of like, you know, we do need to stay where we're at. And of course, you know, the encouragement is, is, is to stay within the city. But we've been given the ability to come back into heaven. So when, you know, when our sin was upon us, we didn't have the ability to come into heaven. We didn't have the ability to come into that place of the Lord. We didn't have the ability to, to come before the Lord. But so here it is, it's, it's, the, it's the expectation of both. It's the city of refuge, but it's also the claim that the Lord has died for you. So now you no longer have to be, you know, worried about the, the revenger or any, any of this world coming against you because now you're with the Lord. Now your, your heart is anchored towards the Lord. And it speaks in those scriptures about, you know, our hope is secured and steadfast with this unbending anchor. And it must be an anchor that's un unbending. It's not located in the sea. It's not located in the world. So we don't we don't lower our anchors on, into this world and, and say, okay, we're gonna we're gonna hope for the best here and and hope that whatever come against me in this world is is gonna be okay. Rather, we we put our anchors up towards heaven and we anchor ourselves unto the Lord. Now it speaks there about the the forerunner, as I, as I read there in uh, Hebrews as well. The forerunner is this. Um, this figure that it doesn't change. Our forerunner is, is positioned in this sanctuary, which is heaven. So the Lord has gone before us. And, um, you know, as our forerunner, Jesus is far different from the Old Testament priests. So we read there about, you know, there was obviously the, the accordance of the Old Testament priests that, you know, when the Levite priest would die, the high priest would die. They were, they were the ones that, the, and to remember, that they were the ones that, only ones that could go in into the veil, into the place where the Lord um, um, placed himself. So in other words, the high priest was the only one that was allowed to go and basically be in the presence of the Lord. So we have Christ who has gone before us and is in the presence of the Lord. So we are now anchored to where the Lord is in the presence of the Lord. And what better place to be? So the Lord is, is essentially, you know, if he's the anchor, consider it this way. He's pulling on the rope and he's anchored us and held us in place to where the Lord would have us be. He's gone before us in order to provide that blessing, to provide that refuge, to provide what we require. And in doing so, all we have to do is remain on the ship, as it was said. 
Um, let's go to, where are we going here? John chapter 14. So the Lord goes before us as our anchor. And that's something we need to really remember. The Lord is before us. He's gone ahead of us. He's gone ahead to provide what's required. And that's what a forerunner is. It's, it's someone who, who, who runs ahead of us and, and, and to reach the destination before others. So we knew that the Lord was the first to reach the destination that we want to be. We want to be with him in heaven. And the desire of the Lord is that every one of us be there with him. That's his desire. That's what he wants. He, he's gone before us in advance to the, for the benefit of our souls, that we would be anchored unto the Lord and that he has gone before us in that place. And as I said, the purpose of an anchor is to hold a boat or object in place uh, to prevent from, you know, drifting due to wind or current. So we are in this world and we will have things that, that come against us in this world. We will have things that happen to us in this world. We will have things that, you know, we need to deal with. And, and, and the, but the Lord is there. Just remember what the Lord has done for you and why he's doing it. Because if you're anchored unto the Lord, it doesn't matter what's going to come against you. It doesn't matter what's going to happen. Because the Lord's desire is for you to be where he is. So if our anchor is upon the Lord, what safer place can we be? Uh, John 14, and um, we'll take it up in verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. So this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. He's speaking to them that, uh, you know, basically speaking to them about what he's going to prepare for them, as I've been mentioning. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. So we see here that the Lord, as I, as I mentioned, and, and you know, is going before us. He's going before us. He's going to prepare a place for you. And he's speaking this to his disciples. Now, keep in mind, this is, this is done. This has happened. You know, the, in my Father's house are many mansions, many, many places where you'll be able to abide. There's a lot of room available, and there's room available for you. There's a room available for me, as long as you remain anchored to the Lord, as long as you remain on the ship, as long as you remain where the Lord would have you to be. And we don't question where the Lord is. We don't question what the Lord is doing. We don't question and um, blindly follow in faith, you know, what is to come about in our lives. The Lord has told us. He's made it very clear what he's going to do for us. In verse 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither, that word again, to the place, and to the place I go, ye know, and the way ye know. And we have Thomas stepping in here, doubting Thomas. You know, you can never seem to just accept what the Lord wanted to say. And what the Lord wanted to show him, he said unto him, Lord, we know not whither to the place thou goest, and how can we know the way? And, um, you know, Jesus said unto him very simply, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man cometh unto me, unto the Father, but by me. He made it very, very clear. He was the way. The Lord has gone before us, and he's, he's, he's in that place where we want to be. He's telling us that he wants us in that place as well. He's telling us, how do we get to that place? We believe in him. We believe that he is the truth. We believe that he is the life. We believe that no man come out unto the Father but by him. And as we believe in this and as we follow this, 
we will be guided by the spirit, by the ministry, by the encouragement of the word, by the fellowship, to be in that place and to remain in that place. So then we'll go from, we'll go from a time where we'll be on this earth, and that will be the time that we're upon this earth, but there'll be that greater time where we'll just be with the Lord where we don't necessarily need to be anchored unto the Lord because we'll be where he is. Because essentially, you know, we're not in, the Lord is with us wherever we are, but we are in the world. We are upon this earth. We are, we are dealing with the things of this earth. We're dealing with the flesh. We're dealing with, with everything that comes forth. But the Lord has anchored himself in us. He's anchored us and secured our place in heaven by the Spirit. He granted us unto us the Holy Spirit. He granted us that ability to, to, to follow him, to know his truth, to know what his desire for us is, and to see nothing else. So if the Lord has anchored himself in us, and, and we've anchored ourselves unto the Lord, what a wonderful place to be. What a joy that is to walk in your salvation, have this understanding, have this complete assurance of trust, of this promise that the Lord has provided for us. Um, if you go to 1 Kings chapter 18. If you ever find yourself in a place of doubt or not sure, and it's going to happen. It always does. But praise the Lord, you know, we have the Spirit. And the Spirit is able to anchor us back unto the Lord. The Lord is, is able to, to bring us back into his blessing by remembering what the Lord has done for us. The Lord has made himself real to us in so many different ways. We talk about it in our testimonies. We talk about it when you know we, we were in fellowship and we talk about the things that the Lord has done in our lives. We see that he is the truth, the life, and the way in order for us to enter into the place of heaven. We are assured of these things. We don't walk blindly. We walk with a full vision of the Lord. We walk with a full understanding of what the Lord has shown us. These things aren't hidden. They're revealed to us in the word all the time. The truth of God is available in the scriptures at all times. And uh, we'll read here um, an account here of Elijah in verse chapter 18, and uh, we'll just take it up in verse 21. And so here it was that um, Elijah, who, who was a prophet of the Lord, he, can, you know, he considered that he was alone in the calling that he was given of the Lord. And um, there were many prophets of Baal. There were about 450 prophets of Baal. And um, so here it was in verse 21, he's speaking unto the people, and Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Now what I want to relate here is we can't have our anchor in two different places. We can't have our anchor in the Lord and our anchor in the world. It's not going to work. You can't be pulled between two different opinions. We can't be pulled because the anchor this side is going to be pulling us this way and the anchor that side is going to be pulling us that way. And what's going to happen? The ropes are going to snap. You're not going to be anchored in the position that you want to be. So here it was that Elijah was saying to them, you know, how long halt you between two opinions? Or I could say to my brothers and sisters today, where is your anchor? Is it with the Lord or with the world? Are we pulled between two realms? Because that's not a place of safety. The place of safety is with the Lord, being anchored in the Lord. It's not being anchored in this world. There's nothing for us in this world. We are here, we serve a purpose, we have a calling, and the Lord himself has anchored himself unto us, that as we fulfill that calling, he will be with us, he will go before us, he will pro provide for all our needs. But, you know, when we're anchored unto the Lord, we have this eternal life. 
And eternal life isn't just a continual immortal existence. It's a relationship with God. So this relationship with God that we are anchored in, we, we have uh, anchored ourselves with the Lord, is this relationship with God through the Spirit, through the fellowship, through, through all that the Lord provides. You know, Jesus has, is going before us. He lays the foundation of the church. His comfort gives instruction. He sent us the Holy Spirit. His promise of spiritual power is upon us. Prayer and peace, those things are required as, as, we, we, as we walk on, on the, in this earth. Um, heaven is a place that, you know, where, the, where our eternal hope is saved. It, it's where we will find ourselves one day. That's what we're looking towards. You know, as I say, we remain upon the ship. But where is the ship going? What's the destination of the ship? Where does it hope to be? You know, when you, when you get on a ship, you're generally going from one place to another, whether it's this side of the lake to the other side of the lake. You know, and we look at, you know, the, the story of the, of, the, of the storm and, and what they went through in between. But praise the Lord, the Lord was there and dealt with those things that came up as they were upon a ship. And they got to the other side. They got to where they needed to be. But the Lord was with them the whole time. They didn't need to worry. They didn't need to be upset or concerned or, and all these things. And we've looked at that account many times before. But think about where we're going to be. Where is that place that we're going to be? And what's that going to be like? They'll be singing. They'll be worshiping. They'll be serving and, and, and ruling and fellowship with others. And, you know, the, the quality of existence that we have or will have in that place of heaven is beyond anything we would understand. We would, we would be in that place with the Lord forever. We would have this eternal relationship with the Lord. We would be where he would have us be. And that's where he wants us to be. That's what he's guiding us toward. That's what he's gone before us to provide. If we go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. So where is our anchor? Where is it holding today? Where do we see ourselves today? What, do, what, are, we, what are we holding on to today? Are we holding on to the things of this world? Are we, are we holding on to some expectations that this world would have for us? And I'm not saying that you know, the blessing of the Lord can't be upon us in this world. But is it where our anchor is? Is it where we define where our blessing is? Or is it defined that in the Lord who's anchored himself upon us? You know, as I said, there, there would be the high priest that would enter into the veil and they would, they would go into the presence of the Lord. And in that presence, the Lord would commune with them. But the communion we have with the Lord now, this is a communion meeting, the communion we have with the Lord now is that he dwells within us. He's provided a place for us in heaven. As I said, you know, there are many mansions and he's provided for us in those many mansions and provided for us a way, but he still abides with us here. So never forget, there is obviously where we're trying to get to, but don't forget the Lord is with you even here now. The Lord hasn't left you. The Lord is, is going before you. He is with you in all that you do. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, take it up in verse 6. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So the Lord, God, he commanded the light to shine out of darkness. At one point in our lives, where we were lost in sin, we were left in the, in, in the realm of sin, and the Lord anchored himself within our heart. And in doing so, he anchored us into heaven. He anchored us into this place of sanctuary, this, place, this refuge city. And he provided that light to shine from the darkness. That light comes from the Lord. That light is, is, is what, what the Lord has done for us. 
um, in verse 7, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So here we are, earthen vessels, weak, brittle, full of the flesh, full of emotions, full of things that maybe we wish we didn't have as, as part of our lives. But consider what has been placed within you. The Lord shone his light amongst that darkness. So yes, we, we are these mortal beings. We are these brittle vessels. You know, but what has the Lord done? You know, the, the Lord once dwelt with the, with the children of Israel in tents. He dwelt within a tent. So he, he dwelt within this, this, this makes, you know, this, this, you know, obviously he gave instruction of, of what the tabernacle would be and how it would be set up. But he dwelt, you know, amongst the natural realm of the world. So he dwells within us in, in this natural life. The Lord dwells with us. But for the purpose that we would one day be changed, that we would be removed from this mortal body, we would be removed from this mortal flesh and the things of it and be brought into this city of refuge, heaven, where we would enjoy all the blessings of the Lord, everything that the Lord has provided, everything that the Lord wants to give us. He's gone before us. He's anchored us in this life through his spirit. We are these, these mortal vessels, but we are anchored unto him that may, he may manifest his life within us. And um, that was done through his sacrifice. The high priest, the ultimate high priest, the order of Melchizedek, the king and the high priest, has complete and total judgment over us. He's brought us into this place of safety, this place, this city of refuge. But not only that, he's cleansed us from anything that was upon us before. And we no longer have to be worried about, you know, the revengers of this world or whatever it is this world is going to come against us with. We don't need to worry about it anymore. Because the Lord has died on our behalf to give us that understanding, to give us that peace, to give us that place of safety. And um, I praise the Lord. The answer to the question, where is your anchor holding today? I praise it in heaven. I pray that it's within the Lord. And I pray that's where each and every one of my brothers and sisters are, that their anchor is in heaven, that they're staying on the ship, and they're allowing the Lord to bring them to that place that he wants them to be. That would be the greatest joy for any of us to see, to see each other in that place, to be able to look at each other and know that we overcame, we, we, we stood in faith, we you know, laid our foundation upon the Lord, and we held on, and we stayed in the ship, and we allowed nothing to sway us from that. We were anchored totally unto the Lord at all times. And if there was ever a time that you know, we needed to look to the Lord to, to strengthen that anchor, to dig that anchor a bit deeper, then so be it. The Lord will do that. And that's the blessing of grace. That's the blessing of, of what we have. I'm going to leave things there. Uh, I'm going to hand over to Brother Clark, who will bring the communion for us today. And uh, I'll do that now.